Well, Coach, the very first play of the game, that toss sweep to Mostert, just beautiful. The edge blocking, Twelly and Bourne, superb blocking. And I thought, wow, open the game with a touchdown run, but you did it again because you did it last year against Cleveland on the wineback run to Matt Breida. So you're told this last year, you, you script the first 24 plays, 12 runs, 12 passes. Do you go into a, a first play of the game, even on your own 20 yard line, thinking possible touchdown on the first play? Is that even in your mind? I mean, we, we do talk that way. Um, but when it's only happened a couple of times and out of how many ever games I've coached in my whole life, um, usually the percentages are pretty low, but, um, you know, we, we told the team on Friday that was going to be our first play um, just in our run meeting and everything. It was the run that we liked. And when we installed it and you draw it up on paper, um, I mean, everyone's supposed to be accounted for and Raheem's supposed to be faster than the guy he's not accounted for. So it's supposed to work like that every time. Um, it just rarely does. But it was pretty cool for it to be blocked perfectly. I'm like, you draw it up and um, it's hard for the guys to do that. And they got it perfect. And the guy that you can't block in the backside they just continual, continually misjudge Raheem's speed, um, which is hard to imagine, but uh, he outruns everybody. So uh, it was an impressive play by the whole team and one that would have been hard without Raheem in there. Yeah, one play drive, one play offensive series to start. And then your next offensive series, Jimmy Garoppolo gets gets hit. And I know you didn't like the play. Quinnen Williams hit him low and from behind. Terrell Basham uh, hit him when he was on the ground. So give me your thoughts on the injury. And then, you know, Jimmy's got that linebacker mentality going back to high school where after he gets tagged like that coach and he was limping the whole game, but he played an incredible first half for you. No, I know he's, um, I mean, he's as tough as it gets. I mean, I think that's why it took people a long time to realize that he was a quarterback because when I mean, he goes back to high school, he just, he was always physical and wanted to play linebacker and stuff. And one day he threw the ball that was incomplete on something else. I think a special teams period and he threw it back to the coach really far away. And they're like, wow, you look pretty good throwing it. We should put you at quarterback. And he's like, sure, I'll try it. And that's kind of how it happened. But he's always had really that mentality. He's extremely tough. I mean, the guy never talks about getting hit. Um, you can never I'm, – I'm usually watching downfield, so I rarely know when he gets hit. So sometimes I'll go back to him and be like, why didn't you throw the ball? What happened? And he, he's never sensitive about it. He can get hit every play, and he, he doesn't mention anything. And for him to fight through that, especially the next – um, series when we didn't have anyone open on the third down. I think it was the third series. Uh, we scored on the first play of that series. Um, and it got called back on a holding. And then we yeah. went on a play drive that wouldn't have happened because the first third down, we didn't really have anyone open. Um, and he broke the pocket and had that off scheduled IU for his first catch. And that really kept the drive alive. So it was a very impressive game for him. And he, he gutted it out on that bad ankle till halftime. And then it was obvious you, you had to get some imaging done and and Nick comes in, which is hard because there's no preseason. There was no off season on the field. He's a hard worker, but he's not getting anything to, to work hard at. So give me your assessment to be thrown in the way he functioned last week. And then where's he at? I mean, we really haven't seen him play. He came in in the Carolina game last year for a few kneel downs, but he really hasn't played in the preseason of 19, but really since going back to December of 2018. So where is he at in his, in his career coach? Uh, Nick's ready to go. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't play real well. Uh, he's had a great week of practice. Um, yeah, he got thrown in there in that game, and it was a little bit off, you know, not just him, but just everybody. I think it had been a while since a new guy had been in there, and just the cadence, the rhythm of the whole offense seemed off a little bit. Um, but we've got a great re week of practice. He's gotten all the reps, and I'm pumped to see him Sunday, and I, I know our team's confident to go into the game with him. And he made some nice third-down throws for you, for sure, to Kendrick Bourne to help keep some drives alive. But, you know, you mentioned that you've only had two – uh, first play of the game, uh, touchdown calls with that kind of distance. Have you ever converted in your career a third and 31 when it wasn't a pass play and some kind of a defensive hold or something where you line up at an I formation and your back cuts it back and you pick up 55 yards? Have you ever seen that before? No, it, it was no, it was amazing. And, um, you know, it was, it was pretty cool. Last year, I got so mad one time because we kept false starting and doing some dumb things, and we ended up getting in a third and 30, and I took 11 off the field, and I put 21 personnel back on just to run a dive play up the middle, and it was more just a, it was more irritation on my part to punish. I was so mad. I was like, all right, guys, screw it. We're going to run this play. <laughs> and so everyone kind of thought it was that again, but it was, it was completely different because, I mean, it was the same play we scored the touchdown on, or it was the same play that we got called back on, on the holding on the 70 yarder and we're sitting there on third and 30 and 
usually I'm going to keep 11 in there and just start, um, run a draw or a screen or something. Just try to get half of it back um, so you can be in a better punt situation. But right at the last second, we really we thought the best play was because of how that play had been hitting. Let's put 21 out there and see if we can get that run again. Uh, so we put it out there. And the coolest part was right when we put 21 personnel out there, they took their nickel off and put their base defense back on. Um, so we could block it up the exact same way. So it ended up being just like a first down play in terms of what the offense was doing and what the defense was doing. And the guys blocked it up perfect again. And Chad made a cutback um, where the, the free safety, the guy was unblocked, overran it. And um, wasn't expecting it to get the first, but uh, we actually did believe it had a chance because of how it had been going earlier in the game. And it hit in a different spot, but uh, it was a great job by all 11 of the guys. Jarek had a great game. And now with the injuries to Raheem Mostert and Tevin Coleman, Jarek McKinnon, I assume becomes your your starting running back, Jeff Wilson Jr. You have Will Hasty, Jamichael Hasty come up at some point. And, you know, Jets just coming back from an ACL, uh, you know, two years. Uh, can you feed him the ball like a, like a lead running back and give it to him 15 or 20 times? Uh, yeah, I definitely believe we can. And, and I know he does. Um, you know, Jed coming back, I mean, he's looked great since his first day at camp. I remember him calling me in this offseason when he was a free agent. And we were really hoping he would sign with us again just so we could, um, you know, just the way the first two years went. And I remember him, you know, our agent, his agent deals with um, John and Prague and talking contracts and stuff. And I remember him calling me in the offseason during free agency. And he just said, hey, Kyle, I just need to know if, if I'm coming back, I want to make sure there's no limitations on me. Um, that the, I don't want to be eased in, like I have to practice every other day. My knee feels good. Um, I just want a shot to go and be treated like a healthy guy. And I, I told him yes, and I kept with my promise on that. Um, but he made it very easy just by watching him out there. I mean, he looked good right away. Uh, his knee has looked good. It's looked great. Um, it's been easy to um, ease him into the games because we have so much depth there, you know, with how good um, Raheem is, how good Tevin is. Um, Jets really own that third down role, which allows Bobby to kind of do the substitutions. Uh, but now with those guys both being hurt, not having Raheem this week, uh, not having Tevin for probably the next month or so, we'll see how that goes. Um, you know, now Chet has a bigger opportunity to get more plays, and, and he's ready for it. I know he always wants it. Um, fortunately, we still have some depth. I got a lot of um, confidence in Jeff, as you guys have seen him over the years. And I, um, if, if he sees needed, I know he'll um, come in and do a good job for us too. But I'm really happy for Jet. He's worked so hard to get to this point, and it's been good to watch him have success in these first two games. And I expect him to have some this Sunday also. And it's just great that he's coming back off a really bad injury, the ACL tear, missing two years. Uh, Saquon Barkley, the young great star of the Giants, uh, suffered an ACL tear. So he's not going to play, obviously. He'll miss the remainder of the year. But a guy you know well, Devontae Freeman, was signed this week by the New York Giants. And he hasn't played. He just got there. But, but tell me about your relationship with him and what do you expect? Do you think he'll get a lot of carries on Sunday? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I love free. I was real happy to see him get signed. He should be in the NFL, no doubt about it right now. I was not happy he got signed by the team we're playing this week. I wish it could have been one more week before that happened. But you know, Free's a real good player. I mean, he's a very good runner. Um, he's very good out of the backfield. Um, similar skill sets to Jet. I'm a little different style of a runner, but just the versatility in the run and pass game are very similar. Um, so Free will run hard. He can make guys miss in the run and pass game. And I know he'll be ready to go. I know he'll be prepared. And I know if he gets the opportunity in there, he's always a tough battle. Yeah, really tough. Last week around the league, there were seven different anterior cruciate ligament tears. And you know well, because you suffered you suffered two of that. In the span of three defensive snaps, you had two guys carted off the field. And it's just incredible. Nick Bosa and then Solomon Thomas. So and also D Ford's out. So you you are a minus three quarters of what I call your gold rush when you go to that pass rushing group, but you guys call it the turbo. So yep. you've got Eric Armstead. So what, what do you do when you go turbo Ziggy Ansah? Uh, you just signed this week, and you also brought in a guy, Deion Jordan, who you were looking at a few years ago. But when you when you want to go to that speed pass rush, how do you how do you manufacture a pass rusher? Well, I mean, fortunately, no, that is our best position. I mean, you mentioned some great players right there. Uh, but not only is it our best position, but it's also our deepest. And so we got a number of guys there who still can affect the passer, whether it's inside or outside. I'm bringing in Ziggy. Um, to me, he's a huge add right now. Um, I know he's uh, has some setbacks these last couple of years, but um, he looks good. He's got his size back and just got him out of practice for the first time on Wednesday. Um, but I hope he can come in and help us a little bit in this game. But I know it's not just going to be one or two guys replacing the guys we lost. We're going to have to do it as a unit. And we're going to have to get better on offense as this year goes too. And, you know, it, it was tough. We lost two really good players. 
And we also know a lot of guys went down, but um, you know, the reality of, of it is we lost two guys. And you know, some of these other guys, we are going to get back as this year goes. And we got a real good team. It's not just a real good D-line. Uh, I know that was our strength last year, and I still think we have a number of good players that it can be a very good part of our team this year also in comparison to other teams. But fortunately, that's not all we have. Uh, we've got a lot of other players out there, and we're not just going to pick it up on the D-line. We've got to pick it up everywhere else. And Eric Armstead is still there, obviously a member of that turbo package and in your base is a base end. And he was really outspoken after the game in Jersey last week. He, he tweeted right after the game, calling the field trash, said he was anxious about it. So what is the mindset of your players to go back onto the same playing surface on Sunday, Coach, and play in a field that saw so many of their, of their brothers go down to serious injuries the game before? Well, I mean, I felt the same right after. I mean, everyone's emotional after stuff like that, and especially when it does feel a little bit different than most fields, um, most turf fields feel, feel, which has to do with it being brand new and us just being on it for the first time. Um, but I also, I mean, all turf's trash, personally. I mean, 30% more injuries happen on turf than grass. So um, that's just how it is. So hopefully one day there we won't ever have to play in turf. But, you know, we got nine games of turf this season. Um, so it's, it is what it is. It's something that's part of this game you got to deal with. Um, you know, I know the NFL and everything looked into it again and, you know, passed everything. So they feel it's safe to play on. Um, but I mean, we always feel that way about turf. I think everyone does and it is new. So the fact that it is new, that does take a little bit of time to break in. Um, but I think we're kind of done thinking about the turf. I mean, it is what it is. Guys have gotten better since, you know, the emotional state of it on Sunday night and pretty emotional on Monday as the week goes. Um, guys have played a lot of games on turf. We know it's coming as the season goes, and I don't think our guys are going to be thinking about it on Sunday. All right, so after a really hard week last week, I guess it was great to, to fly to a uh, resort, the, the quality of the Greenbrier, and just have a little R&R. &R. Now, I know you're, you're grinding. You're getting ready for a football game in the middle of the season. There's not a lot of fun to be had there. But overall, just for your, for your players and staying on the same time zone and all that and have everything from golf courses to ice rinks and the – and the whole deal, what, what has it been like for your guys to spend a week at the Greenbrier in uh, West Virginia? I think our guys have really enjoyed it. I mean, it's always a good breakup from the non of what we've been doing, um, not having to go to the same building each day. Um, plus, with just the way, you know, Santa Clara is right now and everything, there's, there's not much to do anyways for the guys when they're out of there, anyone around their town because of COVID and everything. So being in this kind of bubble, being in this type of area um, where there is a lot more entertainment, there's a bowling alley here. Um, none of, no guys are going bowling on their off days back home. I hope nobody went ice skating, but I know there's an ice skating rink here. I know if you guys went out on golf on Monday and Tuesday, their day off. Um, you know, there's gun shooting range. There's all types of weird things here that I'm sure a lot of the guys are doing. Um, so the guys, it's, it's been relaxing. It's been a good change up and a place I'd love to come back to. A week and a half on the road. You ready to come home, see your family? And, uh, yeah, I definitely am ready to come home. That's, if, we, if we could bring the family here, it'd be a lot. We could stay here for a lot longer. Uh, but no, I, I'm ready to get home and it's always easier to come home after a win. So we get that on Sunday and um, it'll be a fun Sunday night for us. Get a win on Sunday, coach, and we'll see you when you get back next week. All right. Thanks. See you later.